Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. This one's going to be looking at doing some sort of crow or raven. Uh, it's not a ho overly detailed painting, as you can see from the uh, reference image that I'm putting up. So let's quickly look at what equipment we've got. Obviously we've got as brushes. They are pointed mop brushes. One's a large one and the other, the other is an, a medium. We've got this paper. That's a Heiner Mule at 300 GSM or 140 pound cold press paper. Watercolour paper that is. And our paints today I'm going to use my set that I've put together of um, white knights and you can get these tins are quite good so they're the paints and obviously I've got a pencil here to draw the original image on so let's crack on with that so this bird is standing on a some sort of rickety old wooden fence thing and it goes up just under about halfway and that in itself is a, an interesting texture painting so that's where it stood on so the rest of the painting here needs to be where the bird is Part of its leg comes up there and I'm I'm not really drawing this in the a novelly elaborate way I'm just picking out interesting points not wanting to be particularly detailed at all let that come round it goes up like it's almost like it's got a humped back and then to its head It's beak I like that come round and I might do some slight alterations I might bring that there as far as I'm concerned that's the drawing done now there is a background to it but I don't want to put too much emphasis on it there seems to be some sort of faded building or tree there and again another that I think is a definitely a building with some plants at the back of it but Again, we're not going to be overly worried about that. Just one last real check to make sure that this is how I want it. And because it is a dark bird there isn't a lot of detail to be seen but we will add texture I think this picture is more to do with the atmosphere and the texture than anything else right before I start overdrawing everything 
we'll make a start on the uh, that needs to go about there I'm going to adjust the bird a little bit as I think the body's ever so slightly too small so let's let, let's make it a bit bigger What you don't want to be doing is do it, uh, doing too much drawing on you. On your paper because that will ruin it. Won't make it look very good at all. So I've made it a bit bigger. I'm happier with that now. So we'll, we'll move on to the painting of the background. Right, our, our background is very blurred and that's because there's a very narrow depth of field. What that means is the background is fuzzed out and blurry and the foreground is very sharp and you can see the details. So that's what we're going to attempt to put in our background a very blurred out background so that we've got that sense of depth so let's first of all get our bit and we're going to use a big brush you always try and work with the big brushes first get large areas covered and the first color i can see really in uh, in this is a pink so it must be like either dawn or sunset or I'm going to go around this area and it's beat there don't really matter too much because we're going to be doing that fairly fairly strong get some more in and down here that will end up being a much more grassy yellowy colour and uh, to the bottom end it goes a bit brown as you can see in the reference image so let's while that's while that's um, all wet we'll see if we can get some uh, pink in and it only has to be very very light that now let's go for a blue so I can now, it, it might look vibrant at the moment that but this will fade back and what I actually can see uh, is that building so I'm going to put that in and it's, it's slightly purpley coloured and there's something underneath there it's all very vague you don't have to be painting high detail at this stage just Chuck some paint on. You can even see bits of uh, orange and whatever in certain areas. And I'll try and get a bit of texture. browns well, that's just gonna get some uh, slightly redder 
fait. You are going to see slightly more detail in these areas here because it's closer to the point of focus. So it's it's more, I'm not going to say sharp, but in, in comparison to this, it's it's a lot closer to the colour than it, uh, the background is, obviously. Right, for the time being, that's the background done. I've got to leave it to dry now. While it's still drying, if you want to add uh, effects and texture to your... Uh, background you can use a bit of tissue paper and dab like that and it gets rid of some of the excess water as well that so that's a, an handy tip you don't have to do it everywhere and keep moving your thing around don't just keep dabbing like that Yeah, revisit that in a bit. It just adds a bit of interest to the rest of the painting. We're ready to go back over the background with a second layer and reinforce certain areas like that and uh, bits of detailing in this area. So that's what we're going to have a look at now. So again, we'll uh, make it fairly wet. And it's, it's in these areas here that I'm interested in. And I want it, want it to be like a pinky colour. It's already got a bit of pinkiness in it. Get a bit more pinky left. Always remembering that it will dry lighter. Can you get a little bit of very dark green? This is perylene green, and it it's virtually black. This, but it has got a very strong hint of green in it and it's good for kind of background stuff like that i'm going to put a dab of it there as well but that will lighten up considerably now i'm going to use that perylene green again and mix it with some Uh, light reddish brown and we're gonna go down this area again now I'm not gonna wet that this because I want I want some slightly crisp edges and defined edges in this time I'm gonna try and get rid of that and then Maybe a bit more of it. Once that's started to dry slightly, I'll nip the edges down a little bit. What do I mean by that? I'll show you. I'll show you now. So I'll get a wet of water, and that water looks like it's. And these are called lost and found edges. Some you leave very defined edges, and others 
my get rid of that helps with creating texture that's another way that you can do the texture thing uh, again I'm going to get the trusty old paper towel up and put some texture in again we're going to leave that let it dry and then we'll move on to the bird itself we'll start looking at the post and then move on to the bird after because the post is slightly behind the bird as you can see although there are little bits of the post that might just push in front of the bird so let's have a look at that and I'm going to take my smaller brush now because we're working smaller areas but we're still going to be doing large areas in that sense not we're not working little bitty little bits of detail so the first color i'm going to put in and i'm going to do it fairly washy is that that's uh yellow ochre now the other side of that which is slightly more under the uh, darkness as it were it's a bit more in the shade i'm gonna put an initial wash like that in it and an area that does look as though it's got a little bit of dark in it is like that and again this is about um not doing too much detail and we're going to gradually build these textures up without having to mess about too much because if you put too much detail in watercolour painting it just doesn't look right at all so Right, that's that's that bit done. Now we can use those similar colours to make a start on the um, the bird itself. So we're starting to get slightly more detail because we're going to have to paint the edges here. So very careful about what you're doing with this. You might say, well, that's not the colour that I see in the photo, but this is going to add value at a later stage. It's like a, a bit of an underpainting. And as you can see in the actual um, reference image, you can't really see the eyes so I'm not going to really bother putting the eyes in I might pull a little bit of colour out to indicate it later but we'll see about that we'll, we'll see how that works so I'm very carefully trying to stick as best I can to uh, the edge of this drawing that I've done don't matter if it goes a little bit over you can adjust things and I'm pressing down hard and going like that because we're starting to get to a stage where we can see feathering whereas up at this top bit there's not much of that so at this stage we want to 
start thinking about making it look as though it's got feathers. So I, I can actually in this see quite a bit of red in that. So I'm going to get my pen and dab a bit of red in it. Now I'm, I'm not going to go too red because red's a very strong colour. And in certain areas like that, on a, an handy tip is it may not do it yet, but when it gets a little bit drier, you can drag with the end of the brush like that. May not be uh, right enough that. Just this little bit here. Always remembering that this is going to get mostly covered over with much darker colour and while we've got little bits of that darker slightly darker colour let's see if we can get some bits of detail like that in wipe a bit of it out and it literally is all about texture this this particular area is anyway And just randomly just creating areas of texture. We'll come back to that in a bit. But we'll leave this to dry for time being. It's dried to a, a reasonable degree now. So we're going to add some much darker browns to the uh, the bird and start uh, creating see if we can get some of that green in green's really nice for giving dark browns and i'm using my various different browns that i've got here such as uh, burnt umber and uh, some of my other browns which are a bit more chocolatey I'm going to start uh, first of all we'll do the, uh, make sure that area is done and just come down so far with that And slowly but surely we're building layers that will get slightly darker as we go along. Because in the reference image, the, especially the head, it's virtually black. And we've got areas that we can start to define like that. And generally at the bottom of... Uh, at the bottom of the wings they tend to be ever so slightly darker and it's tail feathers that can definitely be darker and we're just really now looking for areas that will represent the dark and we'll start working on that those areas and that's it so all you have to do is create lines like this yeah smaller 
but I, d I don't really want to in this particular painting go into finicky detail. It's more about the atmosphere, this one. Again, we'll put a lot of dark emphasis in this area. Something I want to start getting in and defining is the leg or its foot. So I'm going to get some there you go. using that green. Perylene green is like a, a very dark black green and it is good for darkening a lot of things. So I'm going quite dark now and I've got to be very careful not to be too black because it can deaden an image really easy it may need a couple more coats this uh, especially this dark area I, I could create a definition like that with an eye And again picking out areas that are darker and because the light is actually more or less coming from that side this side is gonna um, be predominantly darker now I'm doing this and it looks dark now but it will lighten up considerably and again like what we've done before but this time it's slightly dry I'm going to go I'm almost scraping it and what I'm not doing now is too much adding lots of water it's mostly dry brush work now where I'm just picking up paint and literally putting it on and painting it some of that brown and we'll keep on layering and layering like this I'm getting a bit of uh, blue and I'm putting it in with that perylene green 
I'm not going to mech up. Oh, it's almost a turquoise. I'll, I'll get a bit more of that brown. So it's a bit more pronounced brown like. There we go. Um, uh, no, it just needs a little bit more. That's it. Now these are the very, very darkest of areas and you need to be very sparing with this. And it, it's just a few touches here and there. Odd bits here. Pick up some more paint and there. Uh, some of these you'd have to absolutely cover all of this dark area because it's nice to have a little bit of tonal contrast even in your dark areas so I'm just going to go back to a certain area in the background that I want to put a bit of emphasis on. I'm going to make it really washy this because the background is very washy and it was just that bit there. Let's see if we can make uh, a tiny bit more green. And that is almost everything done. I'll just take some of the edges out of these uh, dark bits. And I think as far as I'm concerned that's, that's the, a basic painting done. I hope you uh, get an opportunity to have a go at doing this painting. It's not a massively difficult one. And uh, I'd love to see what you do with it. And uh, we can all learn from one another and maybe your technique might teach me something. So thank you for your time. And uh, I hope to see you soon. And if you're first time here, Please subscribe and uh, hit the like button. Thank you.